Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this watercolor painting and I want to talk about one of my favorite ways to approach color when I am just feeling so impatient to start working on the piece. Now it has to be the right piece for this kind of a technique to work, but sometimes I just want to get to the painting. I just want to jump in and start putting color down and I don't want to get trapped into spending hours trying to figure out a very complex color palette. So my, my, one of my favorite ways to go about just getting that initial color comp and figuring out what colors to use is just to use analogous colors. Analogous colors are just colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. Personally, to my taste, I think that they look so pretty. Any area on the color wheel, I think just looks really nice because they are connected together. You're able to have some warm, some cool. You're able to still have colors but they all have that tie together because they're linked. One is next to the other is next to the other. So, so for this one, I, I did a very warm palette, but I also have a little bit more of this pinky purple color as well. So there is some cools in there with that purple color or what leans more on the purple side, but then it's all very warm and pastel and candy colored and, it was very quick to come up with this palette because they were all just right there and I could put down some, some actual paint on a little scrap of paper to make sure that I, I knew which pigments I was going to use to get the colors that I had in my mind. And, and yeah, this is a, like I said, this is a great color approach for when you just want to dive in. It works really great for pieces that are more simple or have a lot of similar similar items or shapes or components that you can add a little bit of variation but can still be grouped together. So like for this one, there is a lot of cloud shape in the piece. So being able to have that and then having the stone structures beneath the character, there are two different layers basically to them and a lot of different individual ones. So I can get a little bit of variation with the exact shade that I'm picking from, whether it's a a more red or a more yellow or more orangey one, but they're still very cohesive. So they, they have that option to have a little variation, but they also become one object. Okay. So when it's time to actually pick what area on the color wheel I'm going to focus on, I, I usually start thinking about this during the creation of the sketch. This is the time where I take a minute to think about what's the the mood that I want for the piece or the atmosphere. What are the actual colors of the things that I'm painting? What are the variations that they could be? So, so for this, the, the rocks in daylight are, or can be this red color. That's what I was drawing inspiration from. But if you looked at it at night, it would be a much more desaturated, cool color. So there are a lot of variations if you want to show it at different times. So thinking through what is that feeling that you want the piece to have will help you pinpoint where on the color wheel it'll be. I wanted this very dreamlike but warm palette that felt like a desert. So of course I went with these very warm, bright colors, but if I wanted it to feel cool and calm, then I would have tipped it over and made it into a nighttime scene. And I could have picked from the blues and the purples and, and used those to be able to, to create a piece that was still very harmonious. It had the opportunity to have variations in the colors, but it was, it would be a completely different emotion and feeling there. And when I'm planning out, because there is a certain amount of planning that I always want to do with my pieces. So even though it's, one of my least planned approaches to colors. I, I still like to go in and figure out what the main shapes, what that actual color is going to be. So, so for this piece specifically, I wanted to figure out what her skin color was going to be and also what the sky behind her was going to be. And I knew that I wanted her skin to have this really warm, more fantasy yellow kind of a color. And, uh, and for the sky behind her, I needed there to be variations so that she would stand out from it. So I went more with this like peachy pinky color, but because I already have this palette planned out, I know what paints I'm picking from because I already have those 
keystone colors picked out, I can just jump right in. And as I'm working on it, I can figure out, okay, well, if this is this color, then I can make the rock this color that's beneath her so that there's variation, so that it stands out. So it's kind of like a puzzle where I, I put down those, those main pieces, I know what's going on there, and then I can just work my way to like the smaller pieces, the smaller areas, and then fill that in. But let's talk a little bit about what I did to paint her skin, because this was my favorite part of the piece. I feel like I did learn something from it, which is exciting. So for, for that, I started off first with this very bright yellow color that I just put down everywhere. And then after that, I used a little bit more of a less saturated mixture of yellow with a little bit of a red color but still mostly yellow. And that is when I put in what would be like the main local color or base color of her skin. And then I let there just be the sliver of that yellow peek through on the edges as a rim lighting from the sky behind the character. And then I just deepened the shadows with a little bit more red each time. And that kind of progression of adding just a little bit more and a little bit more of what was the darkening shadow pigment that I was mixing in helped a lot. I think I, I really enjoyed that process of building up the shadows a little bit more than I think I have in the past where I, I think I did focus more on, on that, on layering it up and spending a little bit more time on that. I do definitely think that it could, it could use a lot more value variation within her skin that there could definitely be darker shadows, but but I do really like how the colors interact as it goes into the shadow. So that that was one thing that I do think I got a little bit better at. And uh, one detail that I thought was really fun that I included in this is when you look at some references with a rim lighting from like the behind the character, oftentimes that will be on a shadowed edge of, of say the face. So, so as it's receding, that side of the face can be really dark, but because there's a bright light right behind them, there will be this edge of really bright light. So I mimicked that with this piece and I went back in next to that rim lighting on the left side of the character. And I just added just a little bit of a shadow on the right side of that highlight. And I just think it really made it pop. It added more life to it. I, I really liked it. I thought it looked really cool. So I might definitely play a little bit more with that, but also study more references that have that kind of effect a little bit more. So I understand it better. But after completing this piece, I definitely wish I had gone darker with her skin tone. I, I would have loved that contrast more if she could have just really popped off of the background and became this really powerful focal point right in the middle of the piece. So yeah, that, that would have helped it a lot, but, but it was stepping in the right direction where it was one of the elements that, that had more of a contrast between the clouds. So yeah, I wish I had done that better, but I'll just uh, make sure that I pay attention to that a little bit more. I, I did make sure that her hair was darker and the, the rocks that she has like levitating around her, that those were the darkest points. They're also really small. So that that element of contrast isn't too overpowering. I think it, it adds just a little bit of interest around her and it frames her in and it brings the eye, hopefully back to that character, back to her face. I just, I think that there's something really very pleasant about being able to allow myself to have some pieces like this every once in a while where I can go into it not knowing exactly what's going to happen, but to be able to just play with it and have fun and see where it goes and experiment. Uh, it, I think it does help me stay a little bit more present with the piece so I don't just like zone out and go into autopilot. So I just, I really enjoy it. I certainly prefer pieces where I, I spend a lot of time really figuring out the color palette to be very telling of a story and to have a lot of a lot of information there but I think that works best for a piece that does have a lot of story behind it and a lot of different elements so so I think this is very helpful very pleasant to be able to just have some pieces that are just for play just for for the enjoyment of creating something and I really do think that just going in using an analogous color palette with your watercolors is 
a great way to do it. You can't really go wrong with analogous color palettes. They just look gorgeous in my humble opinion, but I just think they look really, really pretty. And I have, I've never really found where I've gone into a piece using an analogous color palette where the colors were the issue. It's usually the value or it's usually me having other issues. So, so yeah, I highly recommend it. If you haven't tried an analogous color palette for a piece, try it. See how you like it. See if you enjoy that kind of a process. And that is about it for today. I do have this original painting at my shop. There's a link down in the description. And as always, I do want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your support over on Patreon. But uh, yeah, that's about it for today. So I'll be back next week with another art video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then.